Broadcasting from Oklahoma, the tornado capital of the world, home of the Oklahoma City Thunder and the University of Oklahoma Sooners. This is the Curated Experience Show, a weekly podcast about the customer experience with viewpoints you will not hear anywhere else. And now your host, author, and customer experience expert, Amos Tanuma. Welcome to the Curated Experience. I am your host, Amos Tanuma. And I am so excited because I've got a really great guest for you guys here. Um, I've got Ray Goff. Um, He is a personal close friend um, and someone who's been in this business um, you know, for a long time, and we'll get into that uh, in a minute. Ray, are you still with me? I am. I am. Thanks, Amas. I'm excited to be here. Looking forward to the chat. I am. I am. I am excited too. So, so really quickly, and we're going to post your information, your links, your right, right, you know, right. your LinkedIn. So we don't need your full intro, but really quickly, um, the reason I brought you on here is I want to talk about this industry you and I, you and I are in. Um, this whole consultant business from right. two angles. Um, I'm, I really want to make sure I'm doing my listeners a service. What they care about, what I hear all of the time is their skepticism about consulting, about consultants, um, this whole, what do, what, what do consultants really do? So we'll get into all of that. Right. But, but just from your view, talk a little bit about the evolution of the consultant industry. You've been in this game now for decades. Talk yeah. about um, what it used to be, and what it is now these days. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, 23, 24 years, Anna Moss literally started uh, when the transition was going from mainframe computing to client server. Right. And obviously all the way through the uh, evolution from client server into the cloud. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've been able to see these major, major integration projects uh, from Oracle and SAP and PeopleSoft, which were million dollar on premise 20 plus people projects that lasted for five years and cost 15 to 20 million <laughs> right. all the way through the evolution now of a stand up what they claim mvp right uh you know uh two three to four person three month gig for 50k so it's uh, definitely uh, been an evolution right and, and i want to i want to talk about when when I got in into this business, you know, um, I remember being a young kid working for Accenture. When you t- talked about consulting, technology used to be the sideshow. <laughs> like it was more about an advisory relationship, right? So, so fast forward to more recently, probably the last 15 years or so, you have the big four, your Accenture, all of those guys shifting away from what we used to call management consulting. Because right. I realized that the whole business is tech. Now, now, listen, I get it. Technology is into everything now. Five technology companies constitute 20% of the S&P 5. I, I get all right. of that. Right. But it's right. now become less of an advisory thing and it's turned into this whole, I guess it was SaaS. It's turned into just building software. Like that seems to be in the managing, consulting, and giving advice part and the strategy part seems to, seems to have taken a backseat. Talk about how you've seen that change. And what that has meant about who who works in consulting this today versus say twenty years ago? Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a great point. I think um, two things happen. I think again, when you look at the big the GSIs or the big four or five, however you want to call it, right. traditional consulting, you know, come out of school, MBA, you do four or five years, you know, getting trained up on how to consult right. or whatever your skill set is. But I think as it matured into, again, starting to talk, I think the transition from uh, the Oracle, the PeopleSoft into the Salesforce, Salesforce changed the game because they became a community. Right. It was inclusive with Salesforce. Before that, most people didn't even know how to get into the industry, Amos. They had no idea. Maybe if their parents were educated up. Um, then it was, it was a very exclusive, you know, uh, um, industry, right? Right. But what happened with Salesforce is you have people that were homemakers that were maybe didn't have, you know, an Ivy league background who, because of Salesforce, maybe they worked for an organization and someone implemented Salesforce, they got the skill sets. So I think it changed the game. It made it more inclusive. It made it more exciting. It made people have the ability to use everyday skill sets and bring it into the technology center. So 
the industry was not so uh, uh, stuffy, if you will. Yeah. And I think it also, and it made it more diverse, right? It made right. it more diverse as well. It's, I think that's kind of where we are in the world today. You need diversity and collaboration. I, I agree. But, but I think to that point, what it meant to be a consultant also changed. I, I do remember like I was a junior associate or whatever they used to call them back then. And I would go into a right. room and my opinions weren't really worth anything. Right. Because it's like your kid just got out of college. No one you don't you haven't seen the world yet. And so all of a sudden I became that guy in the room who had been there, seen it, the, you know, the 20 plus year guy. But now that 22 year old kid today, we his advice means something because the advice you're tending to give now is less about here's what your business plan should look like, but his advice and his uh, opinions are more valid because we're talking about technology. He knows the platform. He knows that, that he knows all of that. So now to your point, it's, it's, it's that level of deal. But I, but I think it's come with a bad side effect in my opinion. Uh, and I'd love to hear your, your, your deal, which is it's like everything else, right? Like, Social media made information more available, but it's crossed the line to where it's now too much available. Now you're sort of like that. The democratization of consulting, where if you have a technical skill, you don't need to have a life. You don't even have That's this 10-year background. Well, what it's also done is the product has become less about strategic advice. And oftentimes now consulting has turned into the guy is sitting in the room not to give you advice. He's here to sell a piece of software. I, 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 don't, right. I don't mean to denigrate this, this deal, yeah. but he's here to sell a piece of software and he knows that software and he's going to jam whatever problems you need into that software uh, versus he's here. He's getting paid for his advice one way or the other. Now it's, I'm here, be, you know, it's free advice. The advice part that used to be the thin is now yeah. turning to free. Well, nothing is free, ladies and gentlemen. The same way as your That's Facebook right. isn't free, yeah. they're selling your data. Well, what's happening is because you're no longer paying for advice and you don't value advice, well, you know, what they're selling you now is more and more and more technology. And this is why I keep hearing people tell me day after day, we brought in these consultants, they brought in them, they implemented the whole thing, didn't work. And yeah. oftentimes when I go in and I look, it's not that they did a bad job of implementing it, is that the strategic needs weren't ever met. Uh, and it, not just the consultants, but like the, the even companies don't want to pay for strategy anymore. Talk a little bit about how we've gone from strategy being the most important thing, getting that 20 year guy in the room, you will pay him yeah. whatever he asked for, for his advice to you're more interested in who can build this thing without even doing the strategic part. Absolutely. And what's funny about that, you know, Amos, when you talk about success in projects, the technology has always been great. Yeah. Yeah. The technology is there. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. There's no issue with the technology, right? These projects are failing and there is the return on investment or what I like to call the return on innovation. Right. Not necessarily on the investment, but the return on innovation is not there because of the soft things that they missed. And that's what you miss from the the old school, very stringent, very disciplined uh, arena of consulting. Again, you went from a junior, you know, a junior consultant to a director to a VP, and that took ten to fifteen years. Right. Um, but what you're missing today in that now they're you know they're just building, right? We're just building. Yep. We want it done in three to six months. Right. We before we did three to six months worth of strategy, right? <laughs> right. And so it was you know three quarter strategy and it was a quarter implementation. Right. Now it is three quarter implementation and it's flipped. And guess where they fail because we didn't do the strategy up front, right? right. So and you also have junior people who again who's not getting that training and that's really what you're paying for is for that gray hair in the room or that experience in the room. But we need things so much quicker now. And so I think yes, we want to be fast. We want to be agile. But I'm an old school waterfall guy because you gotta, you know, you gotta measure twice and cut once. I, I, I I'm, you know, I, I'm with you. Can't, you hit a home run, Amos. You gotta touch all the bases. <laughs> last time I checked, right? You can't go from first to third, back to second home run. You're that's not a home run. You gotta touch all four. So no matter how fast we touch all four, we still gotta do it. We can run real slow and it's a home run, or we can run real fast. But the point is now you have. 20 year olds or 30 year old consultancy or guys that start these consultancies that have done 15, 20 projects. And now they put their shingle out. And I like to call them pop-up shops, right? Now you go out and you get the pop-up shop pops up at the, at the you know, the, the, the uh, food truck, right? Right. So, Hey, we're a great consultancy. I've done 13 
Sales cloud implementations. Whoa, how many users? Oh, it's like 19 users. How many integration points? No integration. Uh, what was the scope? MVP. What does that mean exactly? What is MVP? Minimal viable product. Okay. So then what happens with that is when you run into an integration problem or a backend issue, or how do you manage very senior level, have that senior level intimacy? Yeah, with, with conflicting with objectives. Yeah. Conflicting objectives, right? And how do you, how do you bridge that gap? which is, you know, my farm, Eagle Creek, we're different because we were, you know, 22 years in the business. We were one of the big back-end integration right. firms right. who implemented PeopleSoft and C1 SAP, had these major app dev teams that now would really understood and made the transition to bubble wrap this, the sales, the, the cloud implementation or Salesforce with that old school knowledge. So you get yeah. both. And that's kind of really what you need today. And that's where I think you're going to get to it as well as how is the, the consulting business evolving? It's evolving into collaboration where you just don't need an Accenture or a Price or a Deloitte to do it. You need an Eagle Creek and a BXG. You need that different skill set to come in. You need someone like yourself to work with those younger firms or someone like myself to work with you. And we, we have different ideas, but then we can also sit down with the customer and say, here's, here's some diverse ideas and here's how we're going to make you successful. That's where it's evolving to. You don't have to have cover your ass or CYA with right. one big firm now. Right. It has to now be how do we get to the end point? How do we get to the solution? So, so I, I love I love you again. And if you're just if you're just listening, I am um, with Ray Goff, and we are we're talking about how to improve the experience utilizing the often hated word consultants and, and consultants. So, so to that point, let's talk. Let's go back to the evolution you sort of laid out. So sure. we had traditional management consultant, which is all around giving you advice and that and and it didn't used to be the same people who sold you the technology. Then we moved on to SaaS, right? So this is software as a service. So the whole meal became less about strategy and talking about building stuff. But um, if you go look at the results, and I don't want to pick on, I, I'm not, uh, I'm sure. agnostic to all software. That's correct. But if you yeah, look yeah. at who is the leader in the clubhouse right now when it comes to CRM at Salesforce, right? So, and uh, you and I are familiar with the product. It's a fantastic product. But like you said, it's not the technology. It's, it's just a tool. It's how you sort of deploy it. If you go look right. at reports and look at the success of implementations of Salesforce, quite frankly, it's not positive. And it gets worse as you go to other uh, solutions as well. It's not that these pieces of technology are bad. It's because it fails somewhere along the lines from the strategic part to the roadmap of what And I think com right. organizations are starting to get that all we do is just keep building and rebuilding and fixing and what have you. And now we've come to what I think is this next era, and, and, and you dubbed it this whole, you know, business as a service or what have you. This whole, it's broader than just, don't just bring me software anymore. Uh, right. Bring me a solution. Bring me a, a whole on solution that addresses a business pain, which includes, yes, some software de uh, development. Yes, some processes. Uh, but it's bringing all this thing together to come solve a problem. So. So talk about what that means now, um, which is today it seems like is no one's ever gotten fired for, for hiring Accenture or Deloitte. That's and I correct. think what you're saying is is playing that safe route is no longer generating the kinds of results people want because everyone I think I think we're starting to get that this is not a just bring me this one firm. What you really are looking for is a solution that uh, no matter how big and bad you know Deloitte and these guys are. I think you need a cross a, a cross section of solutions to really bring to bear, so that you're getting sound sound unbiased advice, not the guy who's in the room to sell your software, um, and he's going to jam that software in regardless of what you say. That's correct. I, I think um, the point there, Amos, is again, if you look at the bigger firms who were the management consultants, they literally did enterprise application implementation as a favor to their customers. <laughs> Right. They implement. They were, you know, they are accounting accounting firms. Yeah, yeah. They were about the business. Uh, so they're the about business the business objective. Of the house, is this right? profitable? Yeah. Blah blah blah. Yeah. yeah. They weren't. They yeah. weren't here to install anything. You know, no, Oracle, PeopleSoft, whatever the technology was, and now Salesforce. Um, that's not what they were in there for. They were billing fifty million dollars a year in straight up management consulting. Correct. Right. When the technology craze hit. They just started to hire people and had these little bitty firms or these little divisions, if you will, as a favor because the customer, you know, asked them for that for that solution. <laughs> now, again, take it where we are today. These consultants broke off and you you brought in the boutiques who were very specialized in implementing this technology. But again, you kind of lost the 
the, strate- str- the strategic side of the house, right? Right. So generally, the larger firms, the Fortune 100 and 200, still have these long-term relationships. The GSIs brought in these uh, smaller little factions to do their implementation. It wasn't their big, their biggest book of business. Right. But where are we today, Amos? Salesforce is predicting or projecting over sixty billion dollars in revenue over the next five to ten years. And if we're conservative, when we say three times that, that's a hundred. And 80 million in services, but it's probably more like, you know, three to 400 million right. out there. So now the technology has taken the forefront. It is now show me what you can build. Even if you don't build it successfully, <laughs> if I'm a C level and I build you even a mediocre implementation, at least I have an implementation to show you versus <laughs> I hired Accenture or one of the GSIs to do a six month strategy and I got, got 16,000 pounds of paper. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So guess what you are? Well, you now have you're not you don't have a job, right? <laughs> and that 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 hurts me because you know I'm yeah. a strategy guy, right? That's and, right. And, and right. my right. bias, and these are my biases. My bias is, is that your organizations are just not spending enough time measuring, and and it's it it drives me bonkers. But, but but you're right. But I but so then so talk a little bit about I, I want to address. Well, let me, let me, so yeah, let me finish ahead. that. Let me yes, finish please, that thought. Where are we off. today? Back to the earlier point, yeah. right? Is where we are in a world of diversity and, as my kids call it, collabing. Right. <laughs> you know, we have to collab together. We have to, you know, again, it's not just one firm has all the answers. Right. Because the, the, and also the skill sets are so, the, the business is so white hot right now. It is so hard to find the right skill set. So when you are like an Eagle Creek, um, we have cross cloud capability. We have different divisions, different organizations, but we may not be strong in the strategy side. That's why we need to push or partner with a BXG or maybe a point B consultancy that are this pure management consulting. Right. And on the flip side of that, a BXG who's mostly are uh, driving digital transformation strategy or a point B that's a management consultancy. What do they do when you built a great relationship with your customer and they trust a MOS and BXG? But they say, MOS, can you implement CPQ or C or can you implement quote to cash? Can you implement marketing cloud? No, you cannot. Therefore, you need to bring in a partner that you trust that we have a long term relationship. So the customer is now not buying the brand name. Right. They're buying success. And it, again, they're not covering their, their backside. They are they are uh, taking advantage of the technology. They're making uh, they're hitting their business objectives because now they bring in the diversity they need to make to make it work. So that's that's kind of where we are today. That, that's, and that's why I see the industry going. That's fantastic. I I, I want to I'm, I'm I'm running out of time, but I want to wrap on yeah. if someone's listening on this, and most of our audience tends to be lots of service leaders. Sure. And they're sitting there and they said, "Look, I've got a service problem I want to solve." And by the way, I hear this a lot from from the marketplace. The last person I want to call are these guys because yeah. they're going to want to jam me software. So like, okay, buy this thing. Da 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 da. Um, it used to be I could call, you know, a strategy firm and they would give me, you know, um, objective advice. Sure. Uh, but now that what you basically have are these firms, they're firms that all they do is forget your Salesforce or forget service. Now they do one section of it. We are a, so it's hard to get. And so when you call a firm that this is all they sell, uh, whatever your problem is, get what, get, get, you know, you're an old school sales guy. Guess what the answer yeah. is? I got the one. I got the one hammer, so it That's doesn't right. matter what That's comes right. out of your mouth. You know, um, everything looks like a nail. So, 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 let's wrap with talk about if someone's listening to this saying, "I know that X, Y, and Z is broken in my organization. I want to go fix it. Sure. I'm scared to pick up the phone and call service now that because they're just gonna. I know what they're gonna tell me. Uh, where do they start? Do, are they the ones who need to go? find these three or four firms do they start where should they start how would you if you were sitting on that side how would you navigate this marketplace that you you just said requires collaboration if you're talking to anyone who's telling you i have all the answers they're lying to you how yeah. where do i start who is the first person i should call the software company where do you think i should go yeah that's a great question um the you know again when you're looking at the big software firms they are you know, they're hitting on, they have the big marketing organizations and they're sending out, they're doing the webinars and they're doing the email campaign. So the information is out there and it's easy to find. I think the most important thing is to, like we always do, you find your network yeah. uh, and you get recommendations from people because what you want, again, we've established that technology is amazing. Yep. 
to be successful, no matter how big your project or your investment budget is, the budgetary parameters you have, or you know, how small or how big, the most important thing Amos, for these successful engagements and initiatives is transparency and commitment and trust. You know, as a consultancy, we have to have empathy for our customers and for our clients and our prospects, because to your point, they do this maybe once every two or three years, maybe once every, we do it every day. Right. So we have to understand that the, the visibility, the importance of this person's role, you know, their job is on the line if they pick the wrong person so or the wrong consultancy. So it's important for them to go through their network, people they trust, who's done it for them successfully. And when you find, when you get that recommendation, um, you know, you have to, and I like to call myself a CEO, Amas. I'm a chief expectation officer. Yep. I manage expectations from minute one to tell you, is it a fit for me and my firm? Is it a, pit, a, a fit for the Eagle Creek BXG partnership or point B? Is that a fit? Not every project is a fit for every person or every, you know, every firm. So again, just kind of going through your network, find a reputable, reputable people, make sure the transparency is there, make sure the commitment is there. And then everything from there, take care of the soft things. That's how you make these projects successful. And that's how you find the, uh, your, your, the partner of choice. You're always uh, there with such sage advice, but you know, you know what I, what I took out of this, if you're listening is stop, stop just sheepishly looking at brand names. Stop looking at uh, what's the deal. You're playing it way too safe. And by the way, not playing away too safe is more risky than you thought. Instead, Absolutely. do what Ray just said, which is have a conversation with the person, and you will learn pretty quickly if if they if they're jamming their one agenda. If they if they don't tell you what Ray just said, which is yeah, I don't think that this is a fit. I think this if they're not thoughtful about looking at what's what's in your best interest. If you if you heard what Ray just said, the self awareness of a firm to know this these are the things we're great at. And these are partnerships we have we can bring to bear as opposed Absolutely. to a firm who will say yes to everything and do the things they do great well and the things they don't do well, they'll still bill you at the same rate, but do it poorly and doing a disservice to you. So making sure that it, it all starts with building that relationship. So you're, you're so spot on, Ray. Um, and, and, yeah. and, th- and thanks so much for that. I want to I leave one more last thing because we have a lot of sure. new leaders who join. If I'm listening to this and I'm thinking about getting into a career in consulting and doing what you do, Ray, and I'm, I'm, I'm new in my career, any advice? Where would you have them start? What do you, what, what do you want them to, to keep in mind if someone's looking to uh, get into this ubiquitous uh, industry called uh, consulting? It is. It's very hard, uh, Amos, especially uh, for, the, for the younger generation. I think the first step is obviously going through the organization, you know, it, it kind of going back to the, you know, the, the, the old way of doing things through the placement center, you know, all the consultancies now come through the, they come through the, the universities and colleges yep. for placement day. That's the first place you start, but also there's so much information out there, right. For the, the communities, the ecosystems. Uh, for me, if you can believe this um, back in the day, I, when I started this, I had to go do some research in the library. So yeah, I had to start doing research on Oracle and PeopleSoft and or Oracle and SAP back in the day. Today they have the knowledge at their fingertips. So right. you know whatever their interest is is right there at their fingertips. And of course, uh, reach out to us on LinkedIn and and leaders on LinkedIn and friends and, and networking that way. So uh, I think link, LinkedIn makes it very easy. Crazy. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. Uh, thanks so much, Ray, for coming on, and uh, we will talk to everyone next week. Thanks, everyone. Absolutely. Thanks so much. And until next time, remember, the experience is either random or intentionally curated. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to The Curated Experience with Amas Tanuma. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll join the conversation online by visiting us at curatedcx.com or at amastanuma.com. That's C-U-R-A-T-E-D-C-X dot com or A-M-A-S-T-E-N-U-M-A-H dot com. And please invite your friends and colleagues to visit our website or iTunes where they can check this and previous podcasts. This has been a Bian LLC production. Check us next time for another edition of The Curated Experience.